Up close, how she got here, her unexpected challenge wooing women voters, and her strategy for turning things around. She is. But there's a reason all these people have been for. There's a reason 10 of her colleagues in the Senate have endorsed her. And no more than two have endorsed anybody else. We had five senators at one time running. They know she'd be the best president. They know she's in this for the right reasons. They know she cares the most about you. And they know that she can win this election. That was Bill Clinton, the comeback kid 16 years ago, trying to help his wife become the sequel. So far, it has not been easy. Up close tonight, Hillary Clinton on the ropes. Campaign insiders already talking about the likelihood of losing South Carolina and what to do then. In a moment, we'll talk about it with part of the best political team on television, David Gergen, Carl Bernstein, and Candy Crowley. First, Candy sets the stage. Well, if it's change voters want, this is a pretty big one. There's no way that our party would be successful in the fall if we put forward a long-serving senator to stand up against Barack Obama's message of change. Wait a minute. Rewind just a few weeks, and this was the defining challenge of the Republican race. I can't wait to debate health care with Senator Clinton. That'll be fun. Now, months of planning for what was considered inevitable is giving way to a change most Republicans find worse. Obviously, that was not Candy Crowley's piece. We apologize for that. We will get it on later on in the program. Uh, Candy, though, thankfully joins us now, uh, along with CNN, CNN uh, political analyst David Gergen and Carl Bernstein, author of Woman in Charge, The Life of Hillary Rodham Clinton. First, let's talk to Candy uh, about what was in your piece. Uh, Hillary Clinton, it is a very tough battle, certainly not one she expected to be fighting at this stage in the campaign. Absolutely not. And, and you know, here's what's happened, which is really interesting. Uh, this was a woman who staked her campaign on experience. And that's just been turned on its head. Uh, now the, the watchword obviously is change. And experience almost seems to be a dirty word. Absolutely. And she sort of mentioned that today. She said, I mean, I don't know how experience, you know, suddenly became a detriment in a campaign. So she's having a hard time trying to kind of, you know, make that pivot and say, listen, if you want change, you need a person with the experience to affect that change. So, uh, you know, but obviously she's struggling here in New Hampshire. Uh, Iowa obviously was a shock to this campaign. Uh, they're looking looking at the polls. So so this is a campaign at this point looking at a plan B. The moment that got a lot of attention today was when Hillary Clinton, uh, her eyes sort of filled up a little bit. She didn't cry, but she, she seemed close to, to doing it. Her voice kind of broke a little bit. Um, some have, have, I mean, it's interesting. It says a lot about what kind of a figure she is, the, uh, the media, and also the way people view her, um, that, that that became such a moment. Absolutely, and I think it also says a little bit about us as a nation and how we view women and how we view men. I mean, remember after 9-11, very George Bush teared up, his voice broke. Uh, so this was sort of taken, I think, through the prism of how you feel about Hillary Clinton. The, the women in that room were sympathetic to this. I mean, it's been a year-long campaign. It's been very intense for two months. I, you know, they get tired. So this was sort of, you know, welling up, and someone said to you, someone, the question was, how do you, how do you stand this? You know, how do you keep going and it, it, it went to that so I, I want to play that bite uh, for our viewers you know I have so many opportunities from this country I just don't want to see us fall backwards you know so you know this, this is very personal for me it's not just political it's not just public I see what's happening and we have to reverse it. And some people think elections are a game. They think it's like who's up or who's down. It's about our country. It's about our kids' futures. And it's really about all of us together. You know, some of us put ourselves out there and do this against some pretty difficult odds. And we do it, each one of us, because we care about our country. But some of us are right and some of us are wrong. Some of us are ready and some of us are not. Some of us know what we will do on day one, and some of us haven't really thought that through enough. David, the other night, you said the Clinton campaign would need to soften up her image, personalize this race. She certainly did that today. Some of you question whether it was a genuine moment or not, if it was harmful or not. What is your take? Or, uh, sorry, round I'm oh, sorry, David, go ahead. I just, ahead, I just want to disagree with that. I, I think it's very, very important that she go out with class and with dignity if she goes out on February 5th. But I do think there's a legitimacy on her part of saying, 
Let, what is this rush to judgment? Let's we, everybody ought to be carefully vetted. This process don't don't rush in. Let's you know there's almost a coronation. I happen to think that Barack Obama is a phenomenal candidate, but I do think the country deserves to know more about him before we you know affect before in effect he wins the you know absolutely the, prize. He, the most important country in the United States. Oh no, he should be vetted, and all these candidates and their campaigns particularly need to be examined the same way the Clintons have been, but also the campaign apparatus and how they operate of all these candidates need to be examined.